All right, hello and welcome back to Crew Call with the Scooters. I'm very excited to welcome our next guest who is Mark Fleischer, who's the executive producer of the Pittsburgh CLO or Pittsburgh Silver Light Opera. So Mark, thank you so, so much for joining us today. Thanks Emily, appreciate it. Yeah, so we are happy to have you. And um, so let's just get started. Um, I'm a huge fan of the CLO, so I'm very excited and been a huge fan and I've gone to the shows and been, you know, always paying attention. But let's talk, what is, if people don't know what the CLO does for this community, what is the Pittsburgh CLO? Yeah, so I think that's a, a big surprise for people as we kind of go through the list of things. But, you know, we were founded on the idea of a summer theater. Mm -hmm. um, Al Wolk, who was a councilman, and Kaufman, Edgar Kaufman of the, the department store, um, they came together in 1946 and said, "What CLO needs, in what Pittsburgh needs in the post World War II era, is musicals." Um, they wanted to model it after the Muni in St. Louis, so CLO began doing a summer season of uh, professional, at that time, light operettas, which were more popular, um, and then eventually true musical theater um, under the stars at Pitt Stadium. And that was sort of the birth. And, and majority of the, I think the community thinks of us in terms of that six show summer season. Yep. Um, it is our largest uh, line of business. It is now currently at the Benenum. Um, of course, it was performed uh, under the stars at, there at the Civic Arena, eventually in a tent, the Melody Tent, then at Heinz Hall and now at the Benenum. Um, but that's sort of what's known the most. And that's a really big program. And not only is it the six shows that entertain audiences, uh, but it's big history. <clears throat> is what we believe in in nurturing a homegrown talent and launching careers. Many, many people started as a CLO ensemble member and then went on to earn their equity card as a member of the Actors and Stage Managers Union and then went on to Broadway careers. And that includes people like Rob Marshall, who directed the films of Chicago and, his, uh, and Mary Poppins Returns. Um, he started out in the ensemble. His sister, uh, mm -hmm. Kathleen Marshall started there. I can go through some Billy Porter. I, mm -hmm. So many people, and not just uh, um, in terms of sort of the most famous, but also just sort of working actors. Um, CLO as one of the last summer stocks, um, which does eight days of rehearsal and then puts the show on. It, it's sort of a boot camp. Yes. So not only does it entertain audiences and has a distinction of being a producer in Pittsburgh, these aren't shows that are brought in from New York or on the road that then the money leaves us and goes. These are people that are here. We bring in some talent um, from Broadway, but that they are produced here specifically for our audience. They don't go out. Once they're done, they're done. So I, that's sort of a distinction in terms of who we are and what kind of separates us from some of the other shows you've seen at the Benenum. But what people don't often know um, is the education and community program. Um, we actually have seven education programs that stretch back as far back as 1985. Um, and sort of to go through the difference, the one that's also the most visible is the Pittsburgh CLO of Academy Musical Theater, which is downtown, which trains people from ages three to 18 um, with classes in dance and acting and singing, private lessons. Um, and that's, and there's often in a regular year, there's 600 students enrolled at the Academy in after school and weekend enrichment. And, and, and there's a mix, which I really like. There's those people that go, we just want to get on stage and have fun. And there are those people that tell us, I want to do this for a living. Right. And within that, we actually have this new program we call the PDP or Professional Development Program, which are students who have said that. And these are not just from our academy, but these are kids that come together on Monday night from Westinghouse Charter Arts School, Kappa, mm -hmm. Lincoln Park. And they come together on Monday nights creating a peer group of mm -hmm. those, you know, uh, there's always that one in your high school that like, they're going to do it. Yes, absolutely. And now they're with all those kids. Wow. And mm -hmm. they do training. So like college professors come in from CMU, Penn State, other places. Um, they do master classes on how to audition. And that's sort of preparing these kids for that college audition. And we've had great placement and people going. So that's sort of that. And then we also have, like I said, the the children's school that is just, I just want to sing and do enrichment. And we allow a place for everyone there. Um, so those are sort of those are the main ones. But then we have sort of satellite programs. Um, uh, I feel like I'm doing my CLO monologue. Yeah, you're doing a great uh, job. Great. No, we have um, the Gallery of Heroes, mm -hmm. which is an in-school touring musical program started, I think that's 85. That was the first one. These are original musicals. Uh, produced with five actors. They get on a van, they drive to schools, mm -hmm. they sometimes do 120 dates. Um, and these are usually about historical figures. 
So we have, uh, you know, they've been about um, Roberto Clemente. They've been about the steel industry. Um, there's so many, and right now we've just commissioned a new one by Nambi Kelly and Joe Plummer about the life of John Lewis, the late uh, congressman and civil rights activist. Um, they are designed to go into a school, be the first musical experience for students, mm -hmm. but also teach a curriculum point that's been developed with teachers. There's a student guide, there's a teacher guide that we developed with the Heinz History Center. And then on top of that, again, back to sort of the ensemble, these are often first jobs for local actors. Right. A lot of actors you see out there professionally get their first sort of non-union job, carrying sets off of the van, yes. putting it up, uh, and it's really been a great thing. Um, we also have a program called New Horizons, which is for people with uh, adults and students with physical and mental disabilities. It's a musical theater class, it's not a therapy class. It is designed to just teach musical theater. Wow. Um, and that's been going on for a number of years. And then the other in-school program is Creative Vision, which is in a, a residency program for an extended period of time in either Propel or specific Pittsburgh public schools mm -hmm. that uses the arts to increase literacy and obviously attendance increases, but they do create little shows based on curriculum. I mean, these are artists that are integrated into the school. And then we have a summer internship program and on and on and on. Um, and then performances, we do in addition to the summer season, the CLO Cabaret, the Kara Cabaret series. We do um, uh, a Christmas Carol every year, which was a good challenge this year with, with COVID at the Biome, which has been going on for 29 years. Um, and, uh, we also have a lot of new work. We are interested in creating the next musicals. And not only here in Pittsburgh, where we have a program called Spark, which is about the next small musicals, which is a new, new works development program for five actors or fewer to go into the cabaret. Right. We also produce and invest in Broadway. Uh, An American in Paris is a show that CLO created and developed and had a Broadway tour, Tokyo, yeah. London, Paris, uh, and is possibly going to go to Australia. Um, Plus, we've been involved in many other shows from Ancient Proud, which is on Broadway, The Addams Family. Mm -hmm. It's been a part of a, a business model to make sure that CLO is also local, but also in the larger. And that's a huge run through, obviously, and we do even more. But I think that, as I said at the top, people see us as six shows. But that resource of those six shows is helping fund so mm -hmm. many other things that go into the community. So. No, that's incredible. I mean, there's so many things from that because you're right. You do think of those six shows or you, you see the CLO Cabaret, but that's really just the, the top of it. There's so much more that happens behind the scenes and you're educating. A couple things. How important is it for, you know, part of the CLO's mission to really give back to community and give back to the youth? What do you see? You know, I know you've been in theater and in part of the CLO for uh, what, the past seven years? Yeah. Um, what do you think the in terms of youth, why, you know, theater and the cultural aspect of it is so important for children as they're, you know, growing up. I, I believe we've seen this, studies on music have shown that kids that involved in the arts do better in school. I think that has two things. I think the sort of teamwork, collaboration, um, as well as sort of the uh, love of something makes you go to school more often. Mm -hmm. I, I do believe that. I know I was a high, I was big in my school musicals. Yep. I really wanted to do that. I also have to believe, and this is actually when I was living in New York and doing my advocacy in Albany and trying to get money for the theater, I had a guy tell me, you know what? Theater does everything sports does for a lot cheaper. It, and so, you know, a friend of mine joked, it's the non-competitive team sport. And then I said, I guess you haven't been in an audition room. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But once you're in it, you're a team yeah. working for a common goal, not yeah. against anybody else. Right. Um, I believe it's not only is it the theater, it's the life skills, mm -hmm. right? It's working up as a team. It's coming in to work towards a common goal. It's collaboration. It's meeting deadlines. You know, I'll remember from my own youth. <laughs> where my mother would think she would, go, she's like, I'm grounding you for something I did. I'm sure I deserved it. <laughs> not going to rehearsal. And I had to say, stop. That's not punishing me. Right. That's, and so, but that was a life lesson. You know, I will also say for me, and these are the things that I just remember from my own youth, was sort of understanding all the different people it took to put this thing on. And we all had different skills and different abilities. And and, and that goes all the way down from the high school teacher who used to get mad if we didn't know the janitor's first name. Wow, like, right, like, yeah. You know, these are important to know these people. So I believe there's the 
obviously we can trace the coordination and, and being that, but I do think there's something bigger. And that's why the CLO programs are often not just about that kid that wants to be a star on Broadway. Yes. I mean, you know, we have those kids. Zachary Quinto went through the academy as a student, yeah. right? Jerry, Joey Serafini is our most recent, who's yeah. in High School Musical, the musical, the series. They went through and they were a certain type of person. But even if you go back to our old founding, mm -hmm. um, kid, people in the ensemble didn't always go to be that. Dan Booker is one of our board members. He is a top litigator for, uh, in, as a lawyer. He was in the ensemble in college. That's incredible. He's a tap dancer, right? Wow. Yep. So, so I think there's more to it. And I think that's why. And one of the things I've been saying to friends, even though we don't use our old name that much, Civic Light Opera, because right. we don't do the art form. I said, isn't it interesting that you have to travel through the word Pittsburgh and Civic before you get to our art form? Mm. Our, our purpose is the city of Pittsburgh and civic engagement. Wow. And so, and believing that that happens through musical theater, which is a truly unique American art form. I mean, my thing is that, and, and you've done it as well, but it's that intersection of sitting in an audience with strangers, hearing a story from another artist that may not be your life. It's that safe intersectionality that we can provide and hopefully we'll continue to provide. So. That's a long-winded answer to I think what you were saying, but um. no, it's it's so important though, and you know I think that's I'm going to touch upon this now because you are touching so many you know people from different areas. So you have the kids programs, you have the community outreach, you have the shows, which is you know funding actors locally and you know in connecting everyone. So the big question is, you know, this past year has been a little unique with COVID. What has I mean? Did you guys pretty much just stop all of a sudden? Was it just like one day it was like, yeah, we can't do it anymore. I know you had your summer season planned out already. So how have you had to adapt to some of that? So if you look back almost one year ago to the day, right? The 16th will be the, the shutdown, right? Yeah. Um, I was in New York casting a summer season. I think the last day was Guys and Dolls yep. preparing. I mean, there was grumblings of what was happening. Broadway had not shut down yet. Um, and I was coming back. Um, we all like everyone thought, oh, this will be a, a short term. We'll all, you know, hunker down and do learn how to use Zoom and then we'll be back in three months. Um, we did cancel the summer season. It was one of the hardest days I've ever had. I called every actor um, to tell them because I also knew that not only was it probably me, but they were probably losing five jobs. Right. Um, designers, creatives. Um, it was a really emotional day. Um, we have people, I just, we have people that cry when I offer them work. And I was like, oh, I mean, because the other thing is. Right. A lot of CMU kids or students, excuse me, not our kids, CMU young professionals in Point Park get their first job. And we had a bunch of those lined up. They were gonna get their first professional job and an equity card. And now I'm like, no. Mm. Um, I think like everybody, we were like, what is going on? But I will say, we realized that one of the responsibilities we probably had most were the students we had. Yes. Their world was about to be, was being turned upside down with no school. Pittsburgh Public Schools, you remember, didn't even get back online till April. Right, right. Almost a month. We had 200 classes up in four days. Wow, that's incredible. But the goal was to give these students a place to come. And even if we didn't, didn't know how to do musicals yet online, we would find a way to do that. Right. So for New Horizons, which is the disabilities program, those are students that are used to a routine, to mm -hmm. going somewhere at four o'clock on us. So we made sure that happened. So I'm so proud of the education department. It figured out in the early days with Zoom and all, and then eventually we started having to make some more investments in technology and how would this work? And then we had to figure out, because they had to figure out security. I mean, we're all, remember people were crashing yes. the meeting, like, yes, we had to do that. Um, and it was, I, that was our first effort. Let's take care of these students. So we did that. Then it was, how do we stay in touch with people? So much like your show, I started close-ups. And I think April was my first interview with uh, Clay Aiken. Yes. <laughs> um, and it was a mix. We were learning how to do it. I learned how to use StreamYard. I learned how to do all this stuff. Uh, and again, the team, the marketing team mm -hmm. jumped in. My manager of Newark jumped in and we started, she had her own show. I had my show. Um, and we were trying to find ways to connect with our audience. We're still here and then also connect with our artists. Right. Um, so that was sort of that. And then I think as it became real, the hardest thing I realized was coming up was Christmas carols. Mm, right. Which was, it would have been our 29th year at the Biom. Of any year we need a sense of community. And the idea of not doing Christmas carol 
you know, a musical Christmas carol was really hard. So I don't remember what we came up with the idea. I said, why don't we just call QED? And we had a meeting with Deb Ackland um, and she couldn't have been great. I mean, we were trying to sell her and she's like, no, 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 we're going to do it. Oh, you're like, all right. Yes. Yeah, so okay. So yeah. we found a way through their partnership and, and some amazing sponsors to actually broadcast a musical Christmas Carol on QED mm -hmm. plus live plus a streaming right. free to the public. Wow. We That's raised cool. all the money through sponsors like Giant Eagle and Howard Hanna and PNC. I'm going to forget someone, KeyBank. Yep and rad, we found a way to do it for free. On top of that, because school kids come to it, 7,000 school kids a year saw Christmas Carol. For some, it's their first live theater. And the idea of just, so we worked with QED for an education program. And so my actors did talkbacks and we did That's you know great. some pre-meetings. So I, I, as I joked with our CEO, Van Campbell, I'm like, wow, I guess we're TV producers now. Yes. Um, so, I think I'm really proud of CLO finding sort of different avenues for different products lines because I think we're relatively, for a large company, we're relatively small and relatively agile and we're very entrepreneurial. And I think that's what saved us was like, let's figure out, people don't say, ah, like we need to get classes online. All right. And they all dove in. Sure. Um, you know, we're a smaller, leaner organization. We did have to deal with that. Um, but you know, we're, weather's getting better. I mean, I'm finding other things now, like I'm trying to figure out how, we did, um, um, I, and the, the last thing that came up and I wish it was sooner was really how to start investing in artists. Right. So, how, cause so many artists lost jobs. How do we put money in their pockets? So we came up with a program called Songs for a New Year where we commissioned new songs mm -hmm. from writing teams. And then that was passed to a director choreographer who then worked with a singer. We got someone to sing it. We got someone to dance it. And then we videoed it. And then that became five new songs. Um, I'm working with a couple actors now on the idea of a traveling cabaret act that if you had a club or a country club or mm -hmm. private club or restaurant, mm -hmm. if we can make the COVID thing work, I'll bring you a pianist and a singer. That's incredible. That's what, yeah. But that's what people need. I think that's what we, you know, I'm a theater lover been going since I was like I think three years old and I think they, that connection just sitting in the seats but just having that live music and interaction and, and just time to just like take a breath and, and just enjoy something would be yeah so we're trying to figure out you know what does that room look like what's yeah. the distance I think if it's a singer and a piano and a plexiglass shield between them and you know and hopefully things will continue to get better yes. you know it's still a challenge but you know we even did video ones I did a thing called theater grams where you could basically for a fee of which most went to the artist, you could pick one of our actors that's on a website and they'll record a song of your choosing mm -hmm. um, for someone. So we did that at Christmas and the holidays and we did it for Valentine's Day. Wow, and, you know, we had a few people come in, it was really lovely. And you know, actors got paid a little something to put a video together to sing a song. Um, so we, I, I think that we put up an online store yes. of merchandise. Like, I mean, it was like, yes. what else? But at, the, at our heart, we're live theater people. Mm -hmm. We like that. Thing that happens in the air between performer and artist and I so miss being I mean I'm sure you'd say wait being in a room with someone oh yeah there's nothing like it I mean there's really nothing like that moment when you the light goes down and you're just there and and yeah I just I think everyone is so excited for that day and hope hopeful that's sooner than we think but I also want to touch upon this is also a huge year for the CLO this is your 75th anniversary which is and yep. incredible. I mean, you really are like a national treasure here in Pittsburgh. I mean, oh, the you. last 75 years and to get the excitement and the people that you bring in, but also the community, what, you know, obviously probably not the 75th year right now that mm -hmm. you want, but moving forward, is there things that you're thinking about or what do you just want to convey to the city about that as well? Yeah, I mean, I would say, you know, we're still planning for a 75th event. Who knows when it will, it may happen yeah. later than we anticipated. We're trying to get some shows together. There's so many things, as you know, outside our control from case numbers to unions to, uh, you know, what is allowed for gathering. Yep. Um, and we monitor all that and we're working with people to figure out what's the safest way. I mean, number one priority is safety of our artists and our audiences. Um, and so we're trying to find ways to do that. Um, but we want to celebrate 75. I think there's both. And I think in a way, and it's funny that COVID somehow came this year, right? Because mm -hmm. in some ways, COVID will be a the pandemic and the shutdown and the uh, the elements of, of anti-racism that are coming up are sort of a demarcation point. Mm. 
So in a lot of ways for me, there's two sides of this. There's the celebration of who, what we were and what we've done. Mm -hmm. And then there's who do we want to be going forward? Right. And there's been a lot of, in our industry and in every industry, self-reflection mm -hmm. uh, as a white majority organization throughout most of our history. Mm -hmm. um, what does that mean? Not only on stage, but in the administrative offices. What are the staffing positions we might want to add how do we build upon the community engagement we've had to make sure we're serving all Pittsburgh? I mean, one of my goals is a Pittsburgh CLO for all Pittsburgh. And, right. and, and there are things we have not done well. Um, and we're trying to figure out that. And that's also comes through my second sort of goal, which is more community partnerships. We don't have to do it alone. No. So I want to celebrate what we've done. I mean, 75 years. I mean, you know, it's it's of musicals and different and evolving. I mean, we're one of the last large summer stocks left in the country. Isn't that incredible? With us, you have the Muni, I think Sacramento, but they used to be everywhere. Um, and, and, and I think that's to be celebrated. And also because, I talk about this a lot, uh, Pittsburghers make things. Mm -hmm. And CLO is a place that makes things. We're a city of makers. And you know the music, and whether it's a new musical or a revival or whatever we're celebrating, so I want to have that there. And then I want to have conversations as we are with the community, with our people, with our board. We've done board retreats on Zoom. Of who do we want to be in the next 75? Yes. And I think those plans are still coming together because I don't think they should be rushed. Right. Uh, but I think you'll see some new programs, new staff positions, um, uh, restructuring to meet the demands of a CLO for all Pittsburgh. I think, yeah, and that's a couple, well, that kind of leads me because a question I think a lot of people want to know who love the summer series and who go to it and wait for the release of that is I think you guys do a great job of incorporating older musicals that maybe some people know, some people might not know now, but incorporating some of the new stuff. How do you decide on this? That's, that has to be a big task. I mean, there's so many great musicals and new musicals. How do you decide on the six? Well, I think there's a real formula. Um, our, our, motto, our belief is we were celebrating musical theater. And I think we have a small C conservative, conservatory sort of role to play in the older musicals, where they are, wh where, where the art forms come yeah. and where the art forms going. But I also think at the same time, as we move into this new era, we have a, a responsibility to investigate those musicals from another era, both in terms of content, in terms of themes and ideas. And that's actually what I'm really excited about moving forward is how do we in some ways wrestle with those in mm -hmm. public? And, and my hope is that we can pick shows even earlier so that audience can watch a creative team say, well, there's this challenge in the show and here's how we're dealing with it. That's incredible. Right, and I think that opening up, I mean, you've seen that in the theater where whether it's talkbacks, whether it's open rehearsals, I think allowing people into the process is important because I, I, I want them to, to understand that artists are workers just like them and we're all in this together. It's a big connection. But back to your real, actually our new work effort to say is actually part of the, is part of what cause, helps us choose shows. Um, one of it's about our access to material. It's one of our biggest challenges because not only a few years ago, more than a few, Broadway producers realized that there was money to be made in revivals. Sure. So often we can't get access to shows. So we can't produce the newest show on Broadway because the producer is gonna do a national tour Right? right, right. But also sometimes they're sitting on, like Hugh Jackman's about to do Music Man. So Music I doubt Man. I could get permission to do Music Man. Right. CLO. So that's actually what got us into new musical because we realized if we weren't participating in the creation of them, we were gonna get really shut out. So what is what's available for us to do? We do survey our audience on what they wanna see, mm -hmm. um, but we're also trying to make sure it's a mix. You know, I want a family musical because we want to introduce students or students and young people to it. Mm -hmm. I want something that's relatively new. I want something that's classic. So I want, I want a journey because it's about, I know a lot of people pick their shows, but to me, I'm looking at that subscriber. The package, right. right. It says, I'm going to come to all six shows yep. this summer. And I believe that that room is such a magic box. Yes, it is. It should be different. I don't want to come see the same thing. No. I want to be taken to a new world, whether it's one I know whether it's different, or maybe it's what I know. Um, and uh, so I, I think there's this celebration of this American art form. Um, so it comes down to, you know, what can we obviously get? What can we produce well? I don't want to give people something that's not doable. Um, and, then, and then what's the mix? Um, and I'm, you know, and again, we survey our audiences, we follow what's been done. I'm in conversation with producers in New York as is Van, our CEO. 
um, you know, sometimes we do bring a tour in and usually it's a tour we're involved in. Mm, we've okay. actually invested. So it's still kind of a CLO show. So when American in Paris came in or On Your Feet, we were part of those shows creation on Broadway in New York. So it's still sort of a CLO show um, as we go forward. Wow. So it's uh, it's a group of us. Uh, marketing looks at things, obviously. Do they think it will sell? And I'm usually fighting for the artsy thing, <laughs> you know. Um, all, but, yes, all parties need to be aligned in that way. Well, it's a, you know, <laughs> is, it's a huge operation in the summer. It's a 2,800 seat house. It's a full union uh, show, stagehands and, you know, and we, and actors and we got to house people. And, you know, so it's, you're trying to balance those um, as you go through. Well, no, I, I, like I said, I'm a huge fan. I cannot wait till we're all back. As I know you are, Mark, but uh, you guys are doing incredible work. And I think the best thing is you are, you know, a lot of places have kind of stopped, but you figure it out, you know, that connection is so important to you. That history is so important to CLO and Pittsburgh and just like, I mean, the nation. So yeah. thank you so much for what you're doing. And thank you so much for being here with, uh, with us today. We really appreciate it. Of course. I like, I can't wait till the day that the, I know I'm probably going to cry tears when I get yes. the notes of an overture. Um, uh, we did a small thing in the ballet parking lot where we sent our students and they sang live, I think it was in September, each of them did a solo. And that alone was like, I didn't realize how much I was missing yeah. something live and in person. I listen to CDs and or on, I download stuff all the time, you know, now I've just dated myself um, for yeah. cast recordings, but it's not the same. It's not. Being in the room with those artists and, and hopefully we're, if everyone will, look, as, a, as my board president says, you want live theater back, wear your mask and get your shot. Yes, absolutely. Best thing you can do for us right now. Yes. Yeah. Well, thank you again for everything, Mark. Thank you. It's been and fun. Well, uh, we look forward to talking to you soon and seeing more stuff coming out of the CLO. So. All right. Thank, thank you. Thank you.